Do you feel confused about making the right choice when it comes to a nursing specialty, a career direction, and where to live? Let's talk about the cost of living, popular nursing jobs, and what your choices are right here on episode 178 of The Nurse Keith Show. Well, hello and welcome to The Nurse Keith Show. I am so grateful you're listening, whether it's your first time tuning in or you've been hanging out with me for months or years. Thanks for being part of the growing Nurse Keith Nation. This podcast is all about you and your nursing career, and I'm here to share education, inspiration, and ideas that can get you moving in a positive and inspired direction. If you want to see the show notes for this episode, please hop over to nursekeith.com forward slash the word episode and the number 178. This episode of the Nurse Keith Show is brought to you by Janu Scrubs. That is J A A N W, a fashion forward company that refuses to compromise quality, fit, or style. I love my Janus. I think you'll love them too. And for 25% off any order, please use the code NurseKeith25 at checkout when you go to bit.ly, B I T dot L Y forward slash NurseKeith Scrubs. Anyway, check out Janu. Thanks for being here for episode 178, and let's dig right into today's topic. Back on October 1st, 2018, I published a blog post on Digital Doorway entitled Nursing Jobs, Cost of Living, and Where to Hang Your Hat. You see, I talk to a lot, a lot of nurses all the time, and I often hear the same distress from many nurses, no matter what their age or their life circumstance. One is trying to figure out what specialty or area of nursing would be the one for them to focus on for this period of their career, either for the short term, mid term, or maybe even the long term. But the other issue that comes up, especially it seems for a lot of my younger clients and the younger nurses who reach out to me, is trying to figure out where to live. I have a lot of empathy for the younger generations right now because the cost of living, the relative cost of living in many places in the United States right now is really high. People are spending incredible percentages of their income on housing only, and it's just outrageous. And when you're a nurse practitioner or a nurse or a DNP or a nurse with a PhD, and you've got student loans and a family and children and all the other expenses that you can add up in the course of your daily, weekly, and monthly and annual life, man, that is a tough row to hoe for many people out there. And, you know, nursing isn't the best paying profession, but it's decent for most of us, not everyone, but their salaries are okay in many parts of the country. And demand is there, but you need to find a place where you feel comfortable hanging your hat, laying your head at night, raising your family, whatever it is you want to do. And making those choices is very, very important and crucial for your quality of life. So let's start with work style and lifestyle. Figuring out where to live and work can be really difficult. On the one hand, you obviously want to earn up to your potential. You want to get the highest wage you can possibly get. But on the other hand, we also find that the highest salaries, of course, are in those metropolitan areas that everyone is flocking to. Seattle, Austin, Atlanta, New York, San Francisco, Los Angeles. These are the places where the cost of living, especially in places like Boston and San Francisco, the cost of living is outrageous. And, you know, you can make some decent money as a nurse, but based on the cost of living, those dollars don't necessarily go as far as they could go in other places. But then if you move to a place where the cost of living is lower, then wages are lower 
and you end up in basically the same financial boat in many instances. So if you're a single working professional nurse, male or female, you definitely have a lot more freedom of movement and a lot of choices to make. And if you are single and you're out there in the world creating the path for yourself, maybe you're a nurse just out of nursing school a couple years ago, you're in your mid to late 20s, and you want to figure out where to spend the next few years, that takes a lot of research. Now, some employers are definitely adding sign-on bonuses and those sorts of incentives that get you to come to their facility in their city, but you really have to do your due diligence and make sure that you know exactly what you're getting and that the place where that employer is located is a place that will be amenable to the type of lifestyle that you want to live. So if you are single and young, you probably want a place with cultural amenities, with coffee shops, with nightlife, and plenty of things to do, and depends on what your interests are. Now, if you do have children, then that opens another can of worms in terms of cost of living, cost of daycare, cost of private school, or if you want to do private school. There's so many things to think about. And you also have to think about, of course, quality of schools. And there's plenty of places where the schools could use a lot of work. However, the cost of living is lower. So I see and I hear the struggles of so many nurses of every age trying to figure out what to do as a nurse and also where to do it. It's difficult choices to make. And of course, none of these choices are set in stone. Of course, you can move. Of course, you can change cities or states or regions of the country. But we all know that a lot of stressors come with relocation as well. And if you do have children, you don't want to be moving around too much because that's so disruptive to their lives and their education. You could choose an underserved area somewhere in the country to work, like a rural area, and that might be very quiet and the cost of living might be quite low. And if you love the outdoors and you're not as big on nightlife and that sort of thing, that could be great. But you definitely need to make choices that are going to work for you. And I see a lot of my younger clients and nurses who reach out to me struggling with these choices because as a young person, of course, San Francisco, Boston, New York, these cities might be calling your name, but to figure out how to not live in a small closet in Brooklyn and actually have a decent quality of life, that can definitely be a upward climb or a heavy lift, as it were. Now, when it comes to places to live, I keep a close eye on what different publications and websites are saying about the educational opportunities, the way of life, the economics, the housing costs, etc., in different places around the United States. Money Magazine and Realtor.com crunched those numbers for 2018, and we are coming to the end of 2018 at the time of this recording, but a lot of this still will hold true even in 2019 or 2020. So they published a list of the 50 best places to live in the United States. They used a very specific methodology for examining these areas. They were all cities or towns with populations of at least 50,000 people. And the rankings were compiled based on 70 different pieces of data that you can imagine, crime, cost of living, housing, school quality, etc. Surprisingly to me, most of the 50 winners were not big popular cities that everybody is moving to, like Boulder or Austin or San Francisco or Dallas. The top place to live, according to the methodology used by Money Magazine and Realtor.com, is Frisco, Texas, which is a town of about, I think, 180,000 or 190,000 people, about 30 miles from Dallas. So it's a bedroom community outside of Dallas, but It's not really a bedroom community anymore. It used to be. But now T-Mobile, Oracle, 
all these different tech companies are relocating there. And there's a big, big emphasis on quality of life. It sounds like their public schools might be, according to this article, the best or some of the best in the entire country. So if you have children, that's definitely something to think about. The other towns in the top 10, none of them are really household names. We have number two, Ashburn, Virginia, number three, Carmel, Indiana, number four, Ellicott City, Maryland, number five, Cary, North Carolina, number six, Franklin, Tennessee, number seven, Dublin, California, number eight, Highlands Ranch, Colorado, number nine, Sammamish, Washington, and number 10, Woodbury, Minnesota. So we've got a lot of smaller cities and large towns within the aura or the halo of larger cities, but these are places where there's a better quality of life, a better cost of living, and according to Money Magazine, good opportunities professionally. I cannot speak to the professional opportunities in these places for nurses and healthcare professionals, but we all know there's healthcare being delivered everywhere, so the odds of finding remunerative work in these areas should be pretty decent. Two small cities that are just outside of Boston made the cut, Newton and Brookline, both lovely places. Newton is a little expensive, as is Brookline, in my humble opinion. And in terms of the New York City area, very interestingly, only two cities in New Jersey within striking distance of New York made it. That was Union and the Parsippany Troy Hills area. And near Atlanta, we have the suburb of Alpharetta, where my mom lived during the last few years of her life. And it's a lovely little suburb outside of Atlanta, but also pretty densely populated. Interestingly, in California, we've got Dublin, a city of 60,000, about 30 miles outside of Oakland, and Eastvale, a city that's an hour east of downtown L.A. Now, I notice a lot of these towns and cities that made the cut in the top 50 for Money Magazine and Realtor.com, they're all like 20 to 30 or 40 miles outside of a large city. I just find that really interesting. Not all of them, but many of them. So these old bedroom communities that have become pretty vibrant areas in and of themselves, apart from the city that they're kind of part of the larger halo of those cities. I just find it very interesting. Making prudent choices isn't easy. I don't blame any of you for having a hard time doing that. Now, aside from location, 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 which realtors always tell us is the most important thing about anything, and I think that's important to a very, very large extent, we need to be happy where we live, but we also need to be happy doing what we do. We need to be happy with our careers too. And you know, as well as I do, that is part of what will make your quality of life either great, mediocre, or actually pretty awful. Something else I want to call your attention to is another resource, and there will be links in the show notes at nursekeith.com forward slash episode 178, is U.S. News and World Report's 25 Best Jobs of 2018. Now, software developer did win number one. That's okay. Bully for the software developers. But healthcare is dominating the 25 best jobs. Out of those, nurse practitioner came in at number four, just beaten out by physician assistants at number three, but they're pretty neck and neck. And there's plenty of other healthcare providers, healthcare careers in this top 25 list of the best jobs of 2018. Registered nurse does fall at number 18 and nurse anesthetist falls at number 22. Again, if you want to see the full list, head over to the show notes and you can see the entire list and check out who is doing better than who else? And you can see how healthcare dominates the top 25 best jobs of 2018. There's only a few that are not healthcare related. And hey, if you want to be an actuary or a marketing manager or a statistician, a software developer or a mathematician, 
you can be killing it out there. Now, in terms of nurses and the difference between NPs, nurse anesthetists, RNs, et cetera, there's not as much specific information out there. One thing I know is that the Bureau of Labor Statistics doesn't parse out those different types necessarily of nurses and nurse practitioners. They don't really tell us if nurses with a PhD or DNP are doing that much better than those who don't have DNPs and PhDs. So they're kind of getting short shrift, though nurse practitioners and nurse anesthetists and nurse midwives are definitely highlighted in Bureau of Labor Statistics data. Now, nurse anesthetists right now, they are pretty much the highest earners in the nursing world. Their median salary in 2018 is $160,270 a year. And their unemployment rate is quite low at 2.7%. Now for nurse practitioners, again, they don't break this down into adult, family, gerontological, etc. It's just basically nurse practitioner as a catch-all. The median salary is $100,900. So $60,000 less per year than a nurse anesthetist. The unemployment rate is super low for nurse practitioners at 0.7%, if you can believe it. For registered nurses, the median salary is 68450 almost almost $100,000 less than a nurse anesthetist with an unemployment rate that is still very low at 1.2%. Take the statistics with a grain of salt, but that's what they are, and they can help us make decisions, just like the data about these different places to live and relative cost of living can help us make prudent decisions and do our due diligence when there's something we think we'd like to do or a place we'd like to live, and we're not sure if it's really going to move the needle for us. Anywho, when we come back from the break, I'm going to break down another article, another resource on what this particular website calls the 25 best nursing jobs. And we will talk about choosing your own adventure when it comes to your nursing career and your life in general. We will be right back. Stay with me for the Nurse Keith Show, episode 178. Well, we're going to take a quick pause for the cause about how you can support the Nurse Keith Show. That's right. You can become a patron of the Nurse Keith Show, just like other listeners who value this show so much that they want to give just a little bit each month to support the work we're doing here. When you pledge, you not only get the satisfaction of helping produce and support the show, you also get some pretty cool premiums from me. So just head over to patreon.com forward slash Nurse Keith. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Nurse Keith to read all about it. Also, please consider signing up for my newsletter over at NurseKeith.com so that you can receive my bi-weekly message to you right to your inbox. And remember to leave a rating and review of the Nurse Keith Show over on Apple Podcasts and iTunes because it really helps other people find the show. So those are my sincere asks of you, dear listener. So now let's get back to the Nurse Keith Show and the subject at hand. And we're back. Hey, thanks for hanging out there with me with episode 178 of the Nurse Keith Show. We are talking about nursing jobs, relative cost of living, and where to hang your hat and rest your head at night when you come home from work or during the day if you work nights. Anyway, we talked about the best places to live based on a methodology and research conducted by Money Magazine and Realtor.com. Make sure you check out the show notes for anything you want to know and dig deeper about that. We also talked about the U.S. News and World Report's 25 Best Jobs of 2018 and how healthcare is dominating the top jobs in the country right now. So in terms of the best nursing jobs, this is really up to conjecture, and everybody's going to have a different opinion about this. TopRN to BSN.com, one of those nursing career websites out there, 
they compiled a list of their own hierarchy of popular nursing jobs that they recommend people look into. Now, they did not share any other methodology or why or how they went about choosing these jobs, but I find many of the ones that I recommend people do research on are on this list. The list is published in toto in the show notes if you want to see them. I'm not clear that they're saying that number one ambulatory care nurse is the best nursing job out there, or if they just put them in any old order. But ambulatory care nurse is the job that they listed first, followed by camp nurse, case management nurse, correctional nurse, flight nurse, forensic nurse, home health, hospice, informatics, etc. From my point of view, Ambulatory care is awesome. Those of you who've followed me for a while know that I worked in ambulatory care for the first 21 years of my career and am now a self-employed nurse entrepreneur. But ambulatory care, home health, hospice, public health, those are definitely right up my alley. Now, I've never done camp nursing or school nursing, but some people love it. Some people love working with kids during the year and then doing camps in the summer. Could be a great way of life for some of you. And I love on this list of 25 jobs that they list forensic nurse, flight nurse, IV therapy nurse, long-term care. They also list other things like public health nurse, substance abuse nurse, telephone triage, transplant, wound, ostomy, and continence nursing. There's plenty out there. And a lot of nurses reach out to me, even the older ones who've been around a while, and they say, you know, I'm burning out on acute care. I don't know quite what to do with myself, but I don't know what my options are. And the reason I like articles like this one at toprn2bsn.com, and there are plenty of articles out there like this, The reason I like them is that they open the reader's mind to what's possible because so much is possible, but we just don't know because in nursing school, they just don't talk to us about what's possible. The hospital tends to be the be all and end all of so much of nursing education. And I understand why, but there's plenty, plenty more that we can know about our profession and what our options are out there. So I recommend that you do your due diligence. And one of the ways to learn what forensic nursing is about or informatics, what it's about, is to reach out to someone who does that thing, let them know that you're interested in the thing that they do, and ask if you can have an informational interview either over the phone FaceTime or Skype, or if you happen to be reaching out to people in your particular geographical area, meeting over coffee or buying them lunch or breakfast or meeting them at their office and picking their brain for a few minutes. I recommend not using the term pick your brain because it sounds a little, uh, I don't even know what it sounds like. It just doesn't sound quite right. Sounds a little predatory, don't you think? So just say I'm looking for information or I'm super interested in the thing that you do and I'd like to learn how you got here, anything like that. Look into research or public health or substance abuse nursing or the rising brand new specialty of cannabis nursing. There's so much out there that you can do, but you have to do your due diligence and talk to people because reading an article is great, but talking to someone who does something is so much more. It brings you so much more quality of information when you talk and get it straight from the nurse's mouth. So I've known for decades that acute care is not the be-all and end-all, but a lot of nurses need to be convinced of this. Don't get me started about nurses who say that those who don't work in the hospital aren't real nurses. That would make me not a real nurse for the last several decades. Please, don't get me started. I beg you. (laughs) Well, actually, you can get me started sometime, just not right now. We need to remember that there are so many options and something that's almost never listed on any of these articles or lists is nurse entrepreneurship. Outside the box nurses like myself who are doing things 
not even within the mainstream, and they're doing things that are a little bit out of the box. There's plenty to learn out there as well. So do your work, talk to people, find out what people are doing. And I like to say that nursing, like anything else, is a choose-your-own-adventure career path. And that's true for anything. But I find in nursing, there are so many options that Remember those choose your own adventure books? My son had them when he was a little kid and you would choose one path for the hero and you would go to page 92, choose another path for the hero and you go to page 96 and there'd be a totally different outcome. You can choose your own adventure here in nursing as well. And that means choosing between having a bachelor's degree like I do or going on for a master's like I'm thinking about, but I'm not quite sure I want to do it, or even going for a PhD or a DNP. In essence, the unknowns here are the twists and turns of the economy, of political changes, because we don't know what's going to happen with healthcare reform, with the Affordable Care Act. We don't know what will happen in Congress over the next few years. We don't know if the number of insured Americans is going to go up or down. When it goes up, the need for nurses increases. When it goes down, the need for nurses can decrease. It can impact the job market. We also have changes happening to student loan programs and student loan reimbursement programs, sometimes not for the better. So if we're thinking of going back to school, how much money we have to borrow, how much we have to actually suffer to get where we want to go is a big, big piece of it and can help us to make the right decision. So between cost of living, your family's needs, potential salaries, the lifestyle you want to lead, and the specialty, the place in nursing where you feel like you can really put down some roots and make some inroads as a professional, it's all up in the air for you, and you need to make the decisions that are best. Remember, Your family is so important. If you're single, you have a lot more room, a lot more space to say, become a travel nurse for a few years and explore. That's right. Choose your own adventure and use networking, conversation, informational interviews, and deeper research to get you where you want to go. The possibilities are endless, but you need to do the work to get yourself where you'll be comfortable and where you'll be able to lead your best life. So there you have it. Thanks for listening to The Nurse Keith Show. I hope you feel uplifted and empowered from this episode, and I encourage you to take inspired action and do your due diligence every day in the interest of your professional satisfaction in career development. The Nurse Keith Show is edited and produced by Tim Hollowell of thepodcastinggroup.com, and social media and promotion are handled by Mark Cappy Spiesen. Remember to check out my new podcast, Mastering Nursing. It's an interview-style podcast that will inspire, inform, and uplift you. Check it out every Wednesday at nursingdegreedatabase.com forward slash podcast, or just head over to your favorite podcast podcast app on your smartphone and subscribe to Mastering Nursing. I want you to stay positive, care for yourself and others, take inspired action in the interest of your career, and tune in again and again as we explore how to take your life and career to the next level. Be well, dig deep, seek joy, and keep in touch. And adios till next time from me, Nurse Keith, here in beautiful Santa Fe, New Mexico. See you next time and I am out.